Hello and welcome back to Wolfie's Art Adventures. Today's adventure will be about Mesopotamian art. Now I know I've been gone for a while and I am sorry, don't hate me, but I was doing a lot of research for this topic because to be fair, I only remember what I was taught in sixth grade history class and it was uh, not a lot. No, I did not save any of those notes. And if you're not familiar with the, the American education system, sixth grade is secondary grade school. They, uh, it's a secondary grade school thing over here. I don't know, we're weird, I know. Uh, also, the reason this is also pretty late is because I'm trying my hand at audio editing and I'm so sorry in advance if it sounds really, really bad. Don't hate me for that either. Anyway, on to the topic. So if you don't remember, or if you don't know, but Mesopotamia was, is set in what is now known as modern day Iraq and Syria. It was in between two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Mesopotamia was during the time of the Bronze Age and it went through many empires. And with each empire came new art. Now, I'm not gonna go through each timeline of the empires because really there are only three major ones, but each, every time one fell down, every time an empire was quote unquote taken over or destroyed there were different periods of smaller types of empire city states really but with each one came with the new art so now i'm not going to go through the timeline because that's a lot of history that i didn't research i was just looking for the art I'm gonna tell you like it is this is not actual history this is just the history of the art itself anyway so the first art pieces found and known are from the pre-pottery periods. Now we all know what pottery is and if you don't know what that is, take a sculpting class. If you do, good for you. You know it's clay, it's made of pots, pans, bowls, etc. It takes pretty much all of that. Now this is pre-pottery. Yes, it's still bowls. Yes, it's still all the shapes that we normally know, but it's not made with a simple material not made of clay like we know it is as of now at the time pre-pottery was made out of stone alabaster or granite and sand was used for shaping and or polishing of the pottery which were just really sophisticated containers so a jug that's really I mean, just, it's a cylindrical thing it's it's not much but it's what they used at the time so yeah that's what pre-pottery was and really it wasn't until around the 7000 BC era that clay had become a main material. And from that we see the clay pottery finally and it comes in those shapes of bowls and jugs. Now what's interesting is that the materials were used in order to make the pottery. It wasn't until this time that we start to see the geometric shapes as decoration on these bowls and jugs. And with those shapes we also got some ibex aka goat designs. So then after that next were the Sumerian Empire and trust me when I say that it's sixth grade I legit thought my teacher didn't know how to spell the word summer made myself look like a fool but it was a good thing I asked the question because with that now is what I remember and so with the Sumerian Empire we get to see the emergence of urban living which if anyone knows any history of man itself we weren't really known for just sitting down sitting tight making a life we weren't known for settling down sure about this point we were settling down but not as well as the Sumerian timeline because that's when you actually see like the adobes in the middle of the sand dunes and whatnot like that's what they made that's how they started off when you see pictures of Babylonian time with uh, Hammurabi Nebuchadnezzar that's what the Sumerians did first that's their creation that's what they made which is really cool because I want to totally live in a place where I can have a, a garden on the top of the house. That would be cool. Sadly, I'm not of the ability to do so. We also see a great creative age come from this empire. One masterpiece that really catches the eye, <laughs> it's a little joke because it's called the Eye Temple. And if you don't know what that means, it's literally a temple made out of eye idols, just, just a lot of eyes. It's really weird why you would make a temple made up for eyes. It's just it's really weird. We're even idols, but hey, I'm not the one into it. That's what they were. It was all them. But anyway, so I hope you do remember me saying how the pottery had geometric shapes on them. Well, those geometrical shapes stayed, but then they were painted in monochrome or polychrome, which I think is really cool because then they actually started painting. 
I guess you could say this is the first few times of painting made with just, I don't know what they made the paint out of, but that's pretty cool. And another material that was used, other than clay around this point, was copper. Copper was mainly used for sculptures during the early dynastic period. Many of those pieces are found at the Royal Cemetery of Ur, which is cool because another piece of art that I think is really cool is the Standard of Ur. Now, this is an inlaid box or set of panels of uncertain function. It is finely inlaid with partly figurative designs. It has two sides, one to symbolize or to depict life when it was peaceful and one to depict life when it was in war. And it's really cool because normally you wouldn't see that on a wooden box. You wouldn't see like these intricate carvings as well until probably later on in life but the fact that they got down to show you exactly what life was like back then during the two times they show you peace is when the farmers are out the herds are out like peace times everything's calm everything's good and then when you flip it to the war side those that were once farmers are now soldiers and in the middle on the very top is the king and you can see that by how they like to show it was the big hat Sometimes they have a war, uh, not a worn, but a horned hat to symbolize that, and I think that's really, really cool. If not, I'm sorry, I'm just a weird child, and it's okay. I know I am. <laughs> Moving on into the Akkadian Empire, the art here comes out that comes out of this period revolves more around the kings during that time. Not much different than most others, but I mean, hey, you get to see more things about their kings. Blues. And during that empire comes the first Babylonian dynasty, which yes, there are more. I think there was like a second one, but really the first one's the only one we care for because this is when Amurabi comes around and where his codes come from and if you don't know the Hammurabi codes if you've ever heard of the phrase an eye for an eye I think it's also a tooth for a tooth this is where it comes from Hammurabi wrote these codes laws whatever you want to call them for his people because as any good ruler you want to set some rules down so people don't try and overthrow you <laughs> it's weird how that happens but no he actually wrote these down because I think as some people see it nowadays there's the family feuds one family does something to another family, that family retaliates, and it goes on and on and on and on. And we keep hearing that phrase, an eye for an eye, during that feud. This is probably what started it all, really, because you killed one man, okay, well, in retaliation, they killed that person who killed them. And from that family, they, you know, it just continues. I think that's where family feuds come from. Maybe it was all a lie for the game. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then... Also from that timeline were the best reliefs, and a relief is really just a stone carving. So a very good one, or a really known one, is the Bernie relief, which is just an unusual, elaborate, and relatively large terracotta plaque of a naked winged goddess with the feet of a bird of prey. So kind of like the Sphinx, where it's the body of the lion but the head of a woman, pretty much the same, but it's the body of the woman, the head of the woman, and feet of a bird of prey. Falcon, eagle, whatever one you would think of, but I think around that time it was a falcon. Could be wrong. Not good with the animals around that point of life. <laughs> Another one, there, there, there were so many. After the first Bo Babylonian dynasty, it's now the last empire that took control, which was the Assyrian Empire. I think this is when this Neo-Babylonian dynasty period came through, but it was so minor that it just, it was under the Assyrian Empire. That's all I do know from my awesome notes that I took. <laughs> but uh, from here, the art that is known to, the art was known to be very grandiose and found in palaces and public places. Other art pieces found were those of like the lion hunt of Ashurban Ashurbanipal. I'm not for sure I'm saying that right so I'm sorry if I didn't say it correctly. But it was made in alabaster and there are other ones like the Lakish of reliefs. Once again, little reliefs of humanoid animalized people. I, it's weird. Kind of like the Egyptian gods really think of that. Head of an animal, body of the bird of the people or head of a person, body of whatever animal they wanted. I mean, sounds about right. 
Uh, and then in this last empire, there was one last period during that time, which, like I said, it's called the Neo-Babylonian period. And during that, one major piece of art that came from that time was the Ishtar Gate. Now, if you don't know, the Isht I like kind of like the pictures of the Ishtar Gate because that's really cool. So if you really think of Aladdin and you see those big archways that he tries to get into the city with, but they close them and he's like, oh, we don't want street rat in. Well, imagine those gates, but decorated with geometric shapes, animal portraits of lions, bears, well, you name it, like it's all up there. And it's so pretty. And I think they replicated it somewhere in, I think it was a museum in Berlin. I gotta check my notes again, but it's so pretty looking at it. And I wish I could go see it because I, I love art. I want to see it all. But anyway, thanks for joining in today. And if you like it, please follow me on Twitter at Wolfie art wolfie's art adventures and or follow me on facebook which is also wolfie's art adventures and uh yeah just share it with friends family whoever you think would be interested and i'll see you next time thanks